uh, Polelo Treaty Jones. It's there. It's look like Mr. President is going to be engaging the media. Probably a few questions, say maybe about three, and see how it goes. Yeah. That's the way to go. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see. I'll start with uh, SFBC. Uh, President, thank you very much for joining us. Um, in the Northwest, we understand that uh, there's an issue of um, uh, councillor list, whereby it's, a, it's some sort of like a problem in our Northwest. How are you going to make sure that this issue of uh, councillor list of the ANC is rectified? Because some are saying that uh, for our municipalities to be in this kind of a situation is because of some members were not really supposed to be in the positions that they are currently. Okay. Well, President. Okay. That's I thought you take all three. Oh. Okay. Yeah, that's all right. right ANC Yes. Oh, Mr. President, hi. Uh, good afternoon. I'm very tired. Just the uh, questions for Lady Chitty Jones, the NCA. Just firstly, on um, national perspective, obviously there's a cholera outbreak in Hamaskra. Mm -hmm. Residents are calling for your presence. Um, will you be visiting that area soon? Are you aware of what's going on there? And then just uh, secondly, obviously some duties being transferred to the energy the minister of electricity across here to Um What took so long? because it was appointed in March, we're in peak, demand is high for electricity as well, uh, what took so long, and why weren't all powers transferred to the Minister of Electricity? Just uh, thank you very much for that. And the last one. Uh, 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 UFM. Yes, Sawa Morutlan, it's not news agency and UFM. President, we see people on the ground losing hope in the ANC. We know that next year we'll be held, holding the national elections. How is the ANC going to assure to people that indeed it is still the right party to govern this country? Well, as a country, we are facing a lot of challenges. Challenges that uh, include rising prices with regard to food. The interest rates have just gone up. Uh, poverty levels are rising and unemployment is also high and uh, this is a challenge that is given rise to by a variety of uh, uh, issues. And we're also facing load shedding which is making many South Africans most unhappy and angry. But what I can say is that we are addressing all these challenges. The load shedding one we are addressing it on an almost hourly basis. I appointed the Minister of Electricity and yesterday we published for the public information the duties that he's going to focus on. We had to look very closely at the Electricity Regulation Act and how best to split the tasks that uh, uh, have to be done by the Minister of Electricity the legality thereof had to be looked at very closely and the focus of the Minister of Electricity is in relation to generation of electricity and making sure that he addresses the challenge of load shedding. The Minister of Mineral and Energy Resources will continue with the policy matters as well as the regulation matters as well as the renewable energy procurement process in relation to uh, that procurement office. And Minister Ramakhopa will be focusing more on procurement of new energy, ensuring that there's new energy generation. So the two tasks are quite separate, but at the same time, they have to work together. And I've uh, insisted on both of them that they should cooperate and collaborate on an ongoing basis and in fact without even being asked to do so they work together almost on a daily basis they are talking together and making sure that uh, the work that they have to do goes on the cholera outbreak is a matter of concern to me and ministers minister of water and sanitation are dealing with the matter uh, the Minister of Health was also there, is dealing with the matter. So I have ministers whose job it is to deal with the problem and they are coming up with solutions. And uh, I'm satisfied with the attention that they are giving. Yes, I will uh, go and visit the area because we've got to make sure that there's an overall 
attention uh, that should be given. And of course, we're working together also with uh, the municipality. The metro has to pay attention to what needs to be done. So all of government uh, is paying attention to the cholera break, uh, outbreak. Many of our people still love the ANC. Even here in this province, the presence of so many of our branch uh, members, as led by our provincial chairperson, Mr. Manoi, means that uh, the people uh, whom he leads here uh, still have a great deal of confidence and faith in the ANC. And we, in fact, are seeing more and more people saying we have trust in the ANC to address the challenges uh, that we are facing. And uh, so our program, which has brought us here to the Northwest, is a continuation of what took us to Limpopo and KZN, and this is part of the renewal process. And this is also part of getting our structures throughout the country to gear themselves to be ready for the election that is going uh, to, to come next year. And we're finding a lot of enthusiasm in our branch members, in our branch leaders, in our volunteers, and in ordinary people as well. So this is an ongoing process that we are involved in. Your question was? Mr. President, your reaction to what uh, former President Mbeki has said that you must maybe consider holding the BRICS summit elsewhere so that you do not face the embarrassment of having to arrest um, the sitting president of Russia. I have said in the past that the issue of BRICS and the issue of the attendance of President Putin at BRICS in the light of what the ICC has announced is a matter that we are discussing. We are having ongoing discussions in government talking about this uh, matter. Uh, so in due course, uh, you will all get to know what our stance is. There's two last requests Mr. President, Nobunulaba from Daily Maverick, you spoke at length about how the party would, ahead of the 2024 elections, take care of its volunteers. Have there been formal discussions about how this will take place? Secondly, could you please just comment on the calls that were made on the plenary around how structures of this province must be dissolved or disbanded uh, amid this unity that you spoke at length about? Thank you. You heard that you were not supposed to be in the meeting. It's <laughs> 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 yeah, No, no. I mean, we, we have volunteers. We're going to have hundreds of thousands of volunteers for this coming election. And so volunteers are very special people in the life of the ANC. And what I was saying is that we've got to make sure that we enhance their work, we look after them as well in terms of enabling them to do their work uh, on a daily basis. Uh, we should not just uh, uh, leave them out, we must give them the tools of the trade to do the work that they have to do. So that is what looking after our volunteers means, creating that wonderful environment uh, in which they can uh, function well. Your other question was? Was the comment around calls for instructors? Oh, yes. No, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, in any, in any uh, organizations, there will always be people who think differently. Um, the same thing has happened where, as we have gone to all the provinces, uh, Limpopo, KZN, there will always be voices that say, do this, do that. But we are not here to dissolve any structure. Uh, there is just no question about it at all. The leadership that has been elected is in place to carry out the programs of the African National Congress, and we are saying that everyone must rally behind the elected leaders, as we are doing at national level. And we always say the culture and the traditions we have in the ANC is that once a leadership is elected, we all rally behind that leadership, whether we agreed with them or contested them or not. And that is the culture and tradition of the African National Congress. Last time, Mr. President, how are you? I'm not from the city. Uh, Mr. President, I just wanted to hear your take on this. They are saying that now that you've clipped uh, the wings of uh, Minister Gwede Mandashi, you might have a backlash in the ANC, especially that is Chair Are you worried that there might be some others running against you to make sure that uh, 
next day you don't become president, as we've heard that uh, maybe your deputy might be working with the EFF uh, in the coming elections. There is no clipping of the wings of any minister, particularly the Minister of Mineral and Energy. I have made this issue clear right from the beginning that I'm appointing the Minister of Electricity to focus day in and day out, hour by hour, on generation of electricity and make sure that we rid our country of load shedding. Minister of Minerals and Energy focuses on policy, focuses on issues of drafting the next IRP, focuses on issues of regulation, and focuses on issue of arranging the procurement for the renewable energies. And that is the area of focus that he has. And Minister of Public Enterprises focuses on the restructuring of ESCOM. It's a massive organization and it requires close attention, indeed, all the other uh, uh, state-owned enterprises. The Minister of Electricity is focusing on load shedding. And part of that is to find new generation, to go to either Mozambique, to go to Lesotho, as I went with him, to go and procure new, new megawatts. So other people are calling him the Minister of Megawatts. And that's what he is. He's out there hunting for more megawatts to put onto the grid. And those three ministers have their jobs clearly delineated and well cut out. And think I must disabuse people of this notion that the wings of this minister have been clipped. It is an allocation of tasks which I, as president, in terms of the constitution, can do. And this is precisely what I have done. Thank you very much. Thank you all very much. much. Thank, you. Thank you, Mr. President. <laughs> well, there you have it, Rafiwa. Um, and of course, in breaking news, the president saying that he will be visiting the area of Hamanskral in Pretoria in relation to the cholera outbreak, which has, of course, claimed the lives of 23 people and, of course, one person, the Free State. But most importantly, making it quite clear to say he's not clipping the wings of any minister in relation to some of the powers that are transferred uh, from the Minister of um, Mineral resources as well, um, Minister um, Gwede Mantashe to, to Minister of Electricity, um, Kosienzo Ramokhopa, clearly outlining some of the duties that Ramokhopa will be focusing on, which includes, of course, generating capacity, policy and regulation matters, renewal of procurement, and of course, um, other policy issues as well in relation to um, energy supply and generational capacity to ensure that you know the grid does not um, incur any further challenges which could potentially uh, lead to its collapse and that's what the president was basically saying there saying that uh, all the ministers minister gordon minister um Bantash and, of course, Minister Ramoho have duties that they should be um, focusing on, and he's not alienating any one of them uh, from those um, respective portfolios that be focusing on. But for them to work together and ensure that South Africa, of course, does not incur any further challenges when it comes to uh, the worsening energy crisis. So he was quite clear on that, but also uh, placing a lot of emphasis on the fact that they need to now be on the ground as well and try to, you know, win again, restore. Um, some of the confidence of the ANC supporters and of course try to stop the infighting that's happening within the ANC in this province as well. Mm, lots of important developments, but as you say, that breaking news there, the Sawa Bolele Treaty Jones, the president will be visiting the community of Hamanskral uh, amid the cholera outbreak, which has uh, really terrorized that community in uh, Pretoria, the city of Tswane, um, but also, very importantly, issues around electricity in the country, calling him the minister of megawatts. Uh, many would say the minister of microwatts or megawatts because of the stages of load shedding that we are constantly plunged into.